My interest in social prescribing comes from a background interest in health inequalities and the social determinants of health. I've always been very interested in the fact that many of the illnesses and conditions we see in general practice have a social component. In City and Hackney CCG, we started to develop social prescribing um, by doing a pilot project. So uh, we chose half of the practices uh, in the area to have social prescribing and half of the practices uh, just carried on as usual um, so that we could evaluate the effectiveness of the project. It's almost like a coaching intervention. Um, a lot of people might feel a little bit stuck, they're not quite sure which direction they want to go in and in which case it would be about working with that person to help them work out what they want to do and what's useful for them. I think they ought to try social prescribing before antidepressants because not everything can be cured with a pill, can it? You know? For me, two years on is something that has changed because when I started I just felt hopeless and, and, and it's given me hope, it's given me hope, it's given me confidence and, and yeah, I love that. I became a young commissioner because of my living experience living with diabetes and I wanted to improve the diabetes services out there for young people. Welcome to the webinar series which will explain how to develop young commissioners in your organisation. For anyone wanting to adopt a youth commissioner model, I do strongly advise it because if you're commissioning children and young people services, it only makes sense to understand their need from their perspective, otherwise you're commissioning services that aren't being used. Being a young commissioner allows for the younger people to be able to make a proper change within their community, as in they're able to make sure that various groups receive help and care they need. The aim of my research was to actually engage young people to find out exactly what do they know and what don't they know. And I found that 72% actually consider themselves to be European. Which, which was a positive sign. 81% uh, didn't really know that much about how the European Union impacts on their daily lives. And even more young people didn't know or couldn't connect with the European Commission. How surprising were those findings? It, it wasn't totally surprising because if you was to ask a group of adults the same questions, I'm sure they would have gave similar answers. But part of the kind of findings, what I came, what came out to me, was the fact that they wanted more information, they wanted more credible information. People you know and trust in real life. It is great to chat with your friends online, but make sure that you have met them in real life. Sometimes people online pretend to be someone they are not. Okay, stop. This could have been a different story. When you're out of your house, you've got to make sure there is a two meter gap between you and another person. Fight against COVID-19. Remember to wash your hands for 20 seconds after you have touched things. 